three, seven, A, okay? Um, we're going to talk about slope a little bit. Can anyone tell me in words, something over something, what slope is? What? Oh, not rhyme, but rise. Rise, rise over run. Over run, right. Okay, so here's what I need you to remember about this. The rise of slope, okay, can be up or it can be down. You can go up or you can go down, okay? But the run only ever goes one direction. Do you remember which direction the run right. goes? Up to the right, okay? So you either go up and to the right. It's the nose. It's the three chapter three notes. Yeah. 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 Um, so you can go up or down, but then you always go to the right. Okay. The equation that we use for slope, you've seen this one before too. This is the one that goes y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But do you know where we get those x and y values from? No. We get them from points that we're using. So if you have points on a graph, an x1 point and a y1 point, and an x2 point with a y2 point, okay? We take those points and we drop them into our slope equation to find the slope of a line, okay? So I'm gonna show you that in just a minute, um, but I wanna talk about what some slopes look like. I'm gonna draw you four pictures, draw them with me, and then we'll talk about what they look like. So let's say one of them goes like this, and it really doesn't matter where you put it. It matters the angle that you put it at. So just make it look something like mine, and you'll be good. Okay, draw those four lines. Okay, so we're going to talk about what we know about those slopes. Okay, what I want you to notice is that first one from, we're always going left to right. Will you put your AirPods away? Um, the left one, okay? When you start at the left side and move to the right. So when you start down here and move to the right, we're going up. So that's a positive slope. If from left to right, you're on your way up, it's positive. So what do you suppose that second one is? Negative. A negative slope. If you go left to right and you work your way down, that will be a negative slope. Okay. Now these last two, a horizontal line versus a vertical line are different. Okay. A horizontal line, um, we say has a slope of zero. Okay. Um, here's how I always tell people to remember this. Horizontal, right, has a zero in it. It's an O, but think of it like a zero, right? Horizontal has a zero. A vertical line, we say, is an undefined slope, okay? A vertical line, and here's how I tell people to remember this one. A V kind of looks like a U, so vertical is undefined, a zero slope is for a horizontal line. Um, the other way you can say undefined, you're allowed to say this has no slope. Okay, so if you prefer no slope to undefined, that's fine. So the vertical line has no slope. The horizontal line has a zero slope, Dakota. Do you know why it's like, why it matters? Like if it's vertical or horizontal, if they're, if they're still not um, touching the... Um, I'll show you how we're going to find slope. And I think that maybe will make more sense to you. Um, so the way we find slope, right, that's this equation. So if you think of, for instance, you don't have to necessarily write this down. I just want you to understand where slope is coming from. Let's say this point right here is the point zero four. Okay. And then let's say this point is the point three, four. If I have those two points and I want to find the slope of them, I can treat this like my x1, y1 and my x2, y2, and I can find the slope by plugging it into that, right? So I can go 4 minus 4 over 
x2 minus x1, 3 minus 0. 4 minus 4 is 0. 3 minus 0 is 3. And 0 divided by 3 is what? 0 divided by anything is zero. 0. Okay? So notice my slope is 0 when I plug two points on a horizontal line into the slope formula. Now, if I were to do that with my vertical line, and again, you don't have to write this down yet. We're going to do this in just a minute. I just want you to see where it's coming from. So this one is the point negative 3, 0. This one is the point negative 3, 3, let's say. Okay. If I do it with these ones, this is my x1, y1, and this is my x2, y2. So I would go y2 minus y1 over x2, negative 3, minus x1, which is another negative 3. Well, when you simplify this, 3 minus 0 is 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. And if you type into your calculator 3 divided by 0, your calculator is going to tell you you made an error. It's going to say like syntax error. Mm -hmm. That's because you cannot divide by 0, which is why we say it's undefined. It's no slope. We can't do it. Okay, um, so that's where the horizontal versus the vertical comes from. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What's okay. the difference between no slope and like zero slope? Um, so zero slope is like when we plugged it in, right, it worked out to the number zero. When we plugged it into the slope formula, it was a zero slope. Um, when you plug this one into the slope formula, it doesn't work. So we say there isn't one. There is no slope. It's an undefined slope. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we're not going to do all of these, but we'll see how many we need to do to make you comfortable with them. Um, it says find the slopes of the lines passing through the given point. So I'm just going to zoom in on this first one. Okay. When you have a picture and you need to find the slope, your job is to pick two points. And it doesn't matter which two points. It just matters that the two points you pick are on crossbars. Okay. Um, so for instance, this point right here falls perfectly at a point, negative two, zero. Can you name another point that falls perfectly on crossbars? Four, four. Uh, four, four would work. One, two would work. Okay. So you may pick any of those points. They will all work for you. Okay. But you have to pick two. So I'm going to say, what are you doing? Stop it. I'm going to pick these two. Okay. If those are my two points, um, slope is rise over run. The rise can go up or down, but we always start as far left as we can. So that means we are starting right here at negative two zero. Okay. To get to the next point, do I go up or down? I go up. So one, two up. And then my run is always to the right. One, two, three. So rise over run means my slope is two thirds. Okay, so we went up two, we went to the right three. Rise over run. Is that oh, answer? I get it. That's your answer. That's the slope. Okay, so you try it on this Bro, one. Like Pick two points. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> Pick two points <laughs> and tell me what you get for the slope. So start on. Any two points that are perfectly on the graph. So you could start here, or you could start here. You can't start here because that's going to be your ending point because uh, there's nothing beyond it. You always want to start as far left as you can go. So there's three points there. Pick two of them. What would you get? Three over one. Okay, so I would start here, and I would move to here. So one, two, three up, one to the right. Okay, so your slope. Three over one. Guys, this is review. I'm reviewing with you. I do this with my geometry classes too. It's, no, it will. But we're using this to get to more geometry. It's not eighth grade level math. What? If we already did, why don't we do it again? Because you have to use this again right now. And if I just make you do the things that you have to use it for right now, everyone forgets it. So we review it. It's just a refresher. So That's why it's easy, you guys, because you already know it. I didn't know it. But I don't know it because I didn't do it right. <laughs> but I actually was on a post. This one. Yeah. Well, that's why we review. 
to make sure we have it right. Okay, so this one you have a lot of options, right? All of these, okay? But here's the deal. You pick a point and you move to the right. So if I pick this point, do I want to move to here? Yeah. No, because that's moving left. What? Right? If I pick this as my starting point, then I should go here next, right? Move to the right. Okay? Can you explain again? Yeah, so listen. I thought you said that we have to start all the way left. Stop trying. No, you don't have to start all the way left, but you have to go from the left to the right. So you may start here, or you may start here, or you may start here, or you may start here. The only one you can't start at is here because there's nothing beyond that one to the right. Okay? Thanks for moving. I have a question. Yeah. So one naked or this one, would we go down two over one or one down two? No, rise first. So down would be your rise, right? Rise can go up or rise can go down. And then to the right. Yeah, so we always go up and down first. And then we go to the right for the bottom, okay? So from here, if I'm going to start here, oh, so I'm going to go down two. That's a negative two. If you go down, it's negative oh. okay. over one. So down two over one is a slope of negative two. Max. Well, I have to take math down. Yes. Oh. No. Actually, you can't take math next year. Oh. No, you don't. Oh, None of you have to take math next year. No, this yeah, is your third year of math. Too. Oh, no, you don't. Really? If go. you want to go, yeah, go straight to listen, Bro. if you don't plan to go to a four-year college, if you're going to go to a JC first, you don't need Algebra 2. I have a question. What if I go to a JC then next year? You, then don't, you're fine. They'll make you take math at the JC. What about uh, door? Right? Can I go to door? <laughs> no, uh, you need Algebra 2 for door. No. What, what about trade school? No, you don't, you don't Talk to your idea. counselor. I don't want to tell you wrong. I, I don't know. I would guess like not, but I don't know. But set up a meeting with your counselor. Talk to them about it. Okay, um, this one then. So you pick a point. Pick another point. Okay, what's the slope of this line? What's the slope? Mm -hmm. Down one. Wait. Two to the right. So your slope is negative one I'm over right. two. So it's a slope of negative one half. This is so easy. It's okay. Let's do it in eighth grade. Okay. Okay. But sometimes they don't give you the graph. So the graphs are awesome because you can just count it, right? But if they don't give you the graph, that's when you oh. use this. Oh. Y2 oh. minus Y1 <laughs> over X2. <laughs> Right? This is M. M is always your slope. Okay? Um, so now let's label this. Listen. You need to name your points. And here's where everyone messes up. So I get that you think this is super easy right now. But this is where the mistakes get made. So pay attention. This point, if it's X1, then what is the 7? X, no. No, see, everyone wants to do that and call it X2. It's the Y1, okay? Make sure when you label points, you have an X value and a Y value. So X1, Y1, and then the other point is the X2, Y2, okay? Now at this point, you shouldn't have to hardly think because you've labeled everything and you know the formula for it. So we're just gonna drop it into that formula. So it's gonna be four minus what? One. No. One. no, look at the formula. Y2 minus Y1. What's your Y1? There you go. Hey, we don't call people idiots. Um, so 4 minus 7. You're never going to get through this. You guys are going to have homework and you're not going to know how to do it because you didn't get the whole lesson. Um, so 4 minus 7. Yes. Good job. Here's the thing, okay? Did you hear what she said? Uh -huh. Negative one minus negative, negative three, okay? It is subtraction. The formula is subtraction. So minus a negative three. What does two. minus a negative two. become? Two. Plus a positive. So two. this becomes plus a positive. It is two. Four yes. minus seven is negative three. One plus three is two. Oh, so your slope is negative three over two. I'm so shocked they got that right. Okay. Okay. So we're doing three you're doing the next one. We're doing A and B today. Yes. No. 
Um, okay, so this one, shh, let's lay it out. This is my x1, so what's the 2? x2 or y1? x1. That's your y1, okay? This is your x2 and your y2. Plug that into the slope formula. Solve it. Wait, you have to subtract them? Please. It's subtraction. Y2 minus Y1, <coughs> X2 minus X1. I think I got it I haven't worked it out. What would you get? 8 over negative 1. Yeah, 8 over negative 1? I got 8 over 1. 8 over 1? It looks like truly. You are. Okay, so let's check. Y2 minus Y1, so 10 minus 2. X2 is negative 7 minus a negative six. This plus becomes one. plus a positive. So 10 minus two is eight. Oh, negative seven goodness. plus six is a negative one. Oh, okay, man. now here's the deal. I don't care if you leave it like that, but what's a better way to say that? Ne um, negative eight, right? So you can just say my slope is negative eight and that's fine. I don't care if you leave it like this because when you're using a slope, typically to have it over a negative one is helpful, okay? Mm. Um, okay, we're not going to do C because we did two. I just wanted to make sure you were good on that. Then here's your two forms, okay? And I know you've seen these before, but maybe you don't remember them. Usually people... Was C, was C 15 over zero? <sighs> no, I Negative 15 over zero, which is undefined. You Right? Because you can't, you can't, di uh, can't divide by zero. Okay, so here's your two forms, and then we're done with the first half, and we'll do our framed, and then we'll move on to the second half. Um, we will, sure. Okay, so my guess is this is the one you're most familiar with, slope-intercept form. Does anyone remember what slope-intercept form looks like? Good job, Luke. Um, okay, slope-intercept form is this. Y equals MX plus B. There you go. Yes. Um, okay, can you tell me what M stands for? What's the M? Nobody remembers what M stands for? M stands for, what were we finding? Slope. M is your slope. Okay, so here's the deal. M is your slope. Does anyone remember what B stands for? If I have like Y equals 2X plus 1, this is your slope. What's this? The 1. What is that? What does it stand for? Do you remember? It's the Y intercept. Okay, it's where it hits your Y axis. Okay, so this is slope intercept form. The other form is point slope form, and that one looks like this. This is y minus your y1 equals m times x minus your x1. So in point slope form, you'll have two things, a point and a slope, right? Your slope is the m. Is the first y supposed to have a 2? No, it's just y minus y1 and then x minus x1. So wait. Wouldn't then, wouldn't then y1 be y2 because y is equal to y? No, so this one, it's because you have a point, right? That's your x1, y1. So the point you're starting with, gentlemen, the point you're starting with is x1, y1, right? So when you're done with this formula, it will be y minus 2 equals 1 third times x plus 4 or something like that. Okay, so you'll have a point and you'll have a slope. The X and the Y stay put, so we don't put a Y2 and an X2 with that. Um, but that will be the two different forms that we're gonna work with. Okay, so this is point slope form. Um, both of them have a slope. One of them uses a Y intercept. The other one uses a point that we start with. Okay, and I'll get more into that 
in the second half of the lesson what we're going to do with that. But we're going to take a little break here and let you do your... Here we go. Uh, we have like 40 minutes still, 35. Okay, so for this one, now they're going to ask you to graph these lines. This one, if you recall, is slope-intercept form, right? So you have a slope and a y-intercept. Here's what you need to make note of. You always graph the y-intercept first. Okay, so make sure you graph the y-intercept first. What is your y-intercept in y equals 2 thirds x plus 1? Which one's the y-intercept? The 2 thirds or the 1? The 1. The 1, okay. So this is what you're going to graph first. That's your y-intercept. Um, your y-axis is the vertical one, right? This is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. So if I'm going to plot a y-intercept of 1, we're going to hit 1 on that vertical axis. So we're going to go right here from 0, 0, up 1, and put a point. Okay, that's your y-intercept. Then from there, we're going to graph our slope. And a slope of 2 thirds means we go up or down, up 2, and to the right 3. Okay, so here's what you do. From that point of 1, you're going to go up 2, 1, 2, 3 to the right, and you put your point right there, and you're done. Now you just draw your line in. Okay? So that purple line is this purple equation. Okay? Um, move over to the fourth example. Hey, quit. Just listen. Just listen. This is point slope form. We're not going to do that one yet. Okay, we're going to come back to that one. We're going to go over to this one. And we're going to do the slope intercept form again. Okay, where do you move first? Down two. Down two. A y intercept of two means from zero, zero, you go down two and you plot a point. Okay, then you move your slope. Where does a slope of negative one fourth go? Down, down, down. down one over which direction? Right. Always to the right. Uh, Always go. to the right. Just. So you are going for negative one fourth. Wait, the four isn't negative, so that's why we go to the right. Always to the right. It's always the, always put the negative with your top number. Okay. okay? So wait, will they? They won't ever like both be negative. No. Mm -mm. The I mean, they shouldn't because a negative over a negative just becomes a positive, right? Why does it smell like water? Okay, so if we go down one. And then one, two, three, four to the right. Okay, that puts me there. <coughs> oh, wait. Oh, I know why. Force is being. Hold on, a watermelon. No, I'm not. A watermelon scented what? Body butter? Oh. It's lotion. Okay, so listen. Body butter. It's a lotion. 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 Um, focus, team. Focus. That's slope-intercept form. Do you have questions on how to graph slope-intercept form? No. Okay. Then, the second ones, and we're going to do these on the same two graphs, okay? Now there's these two, and these are point-slope form. Okay, now here's where it gets a little bit trickier. We said in point slope form, it's y minus your y1 equals m times x minus your x1, right? That means my m is negative 2, okay? We need to figure out what is our point. And a point is always an x value and a y value. But here's the thing. The equation starts with subtraction, right? So if I move up here and I still have subtraction, that means this number is a positive number, right? Y minus what number? Y minus three. So three is positive and it goes right here. That's my Y value of my point. 
the x value is now x plus some number. Well, if the equation says x minus a number, what would we have to subtract to get x plus 3 right there? It's like saying x minus a negative 3, right? Would become plus a positive 3. So this number is actually a negative 3. So the tricky thing about point slope form is it's always opposite of what it looks like. This looks like a negative 3. It's a positive 3. This looks like a positive 3. It's a negative 3. Uh -huh. so it's tricky, right? Because you're subtracting, so it's taking the opposite. So would the answer for the next one just be 2 and 4? Um, 4, 2, right? Because this is the x value. This is the y value. But yes, 4, 2. Okay, so look at this. When we graph this then, this is what we're trying to graph. A point of negative 3, 3, so plot that first, 1, 2, 3 to the left, and 1, 2, 3 up. Okay, so that's our point. What does a slope of negative 2 do? Down 2. Oh, lots of negative 2 is like negative 2 over 1, <laughs> right? So if we're doing negative 2, it's actually down 2 to the right 1. And you can keep going, down 2 to the right 1, down 2 to the right 1. Technically, I only need two points. But if you want to make a nice straight line, give me a few. That's fine. So this is the graph of that line. <coughs> okay. So you plotted your negative 3, 3. And then from that point, you went down 2 to the right 1. Right, because that's our slope. Negative two is like negative two over one. Okay, let's try it on this one. We're looking for a point and we're looking for a slope. Can anyone tell me the slope right now? Slope's not four. One, negative one third is your slope. Okay, so the slope is the negative one third. Okay, now your point, the x is with the x and the y is with the y and it's opposite of what it looks like. So you cross them, right? You switch places. This is gonna go here, this is gonna go here and you change the sign. So if it looks like a minus right now, no, just leave it. Nope, mm -mm. sit down and take notes with me. Um, if we swap places, and we swap, swap signs, this is what? A positive four and a positive two. Okay, so swap places, x moves to y, y moves to x in terms of where they are in the setup, and then change the sign of each. Let's try another one before we, well, let's, okay, let's graph this and then I'll show you one more. Um, what do you plot first here, the point or the slope? Point. The point. So we're going to go 4, 2. So 4 to the right and up 2 is this point. Where do you move for a slope of negative 1 third? Down 1. Down 1. Three. Always to the right. Okay? So down 1, right 3 puts you there. Down 1, 1, 2, 3 to the right. Okay, speed round. You don't have to write this down. You've already done the work. Aiden, can you please stop playing the play song? The Aiden and Tim's. Can you please stop playing the play song? Why are you looking at me? Okay. <laughs> Three different equations. <laughs> Listen. Three different equations. I want to know the point and the slope for each one. Tell me, shh, tell me the point for this equation. Remember, swap them and change their signs. Negative two. Positive one. And what's the slope? One-fifth, right? So opposite of this, opposite of that, 
swap places, right? This goes here, this goes here, okay? What's the point on this one? Positive seven, negative four, and your slope is negative two thirds. Okay, if you've given me an answer, you don't get to give me the answer right now. What's the point? That is not true. What's the point here and what's the slope? What does this become? Slope is what? Go ahead, Matt. Oh, so that's going to be positive two. Right? That's positive two. What is this? Positive one. Positive one. And what's the slope? What's up? The slope. Oh, the slope's five. Okay. So swap them. Wait, change the, the signs. It's just the letter they always represent for slope. Why? I think because an S kind of looks like a five a lot of the time. Could so they didn't use you? S. I don't know. Q. Um, we can't make it anything. We are not mathematicians. Okay, this is very straightforward now. I'm giving you a slope and a y-intercept. Remember, we have these two forms, y equals mx plus b, and y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, okay? If I have a slope and a y-intercept, which of these forms makes sense? The first one or the second one? The first one, slope-intercept form, right? It has a slope and a y-intercept. So what is this equation gonna look like if I plug in my slope and I plug in my y-intercept? Y equals what? Y equals three x plus Yes. What if my slope or what if my y intercept was negative five? Y equals three x minus five. Minus five then. Okay. Okay. This one, you have a point and you have a slope. Which of these two forms makes more sense? The second one. The second one. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, are you the y equals or the y minus y one equals m that formula? Mm -hmm. We take like our test, are you gonna give us that formula? Yeah, have to no, I'll give it to you. Okay. Um, okay, so you have a point, so this is x1, y1, and you have a slope, that's your m, and we're just gonna plug it into point slope form. So it's gonna be y, is it gonna be plus or minus for y? Minus. Minus, right, that's a positive five, so it's y minus five. What is m? Two, and then it's x minus what? What's your x value? Negative one. Negative one. Okay, now here's where you got to do a little extra work. What's x minus negative one? Plus a positive, right? So this becomes plus a positive. So your answer is y minus five equals two times x plus one. Notice what happened again. We swapped the places of our x and our y, right? Y came at the beginning, x came at the end, and they're opposite of what they looked like in the original point. The five looks negative now, even though it's positive. The x looks positive now, even though it's negative, because we're subtracting, okay? Taking the opposite. Um, okay. We're not gonna do this. We're going to do number seven here. Um, horizontal lines. Actually, I'm going to undo my scribbling because I'm going to use this just to show you something. Um, a horizontal line like this, for instance. Okay, this is a horizontal line, right? If you think looking out on the horizon, you know what the horizon is, right? Looking out on the horizon. So this is a horizontal line. Think about the points that make up that line. You have 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, right? 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. Hold on. I thought you were not doing this. Yeah, this is we're not. This is, I'm just explaining this to you. We're not, we're not doing the problem. I'm just using the graph to show you something, Okay. Um, what do you notice about all of these points? 
They go up a number for their X. What about their Y? Stays the same. Y stays the same. So whenever you have a horizontal line, your equation is always Y equals whatever number you're at, you're at. Okay. So a horizontal line. Okay is always y equals. Here's what I tell people, horizontal. If you flip a y upside down, it kind of looks like an h, right? So y equals is always your horizontal line. X equals, okay, take a look at this line. Okay, look at this graph. Okay, look at the like bluish green line right now. If I name those points, okay, those four points are the points negative two, zero, negative two, one, uh, negative one, sorry, negative two, negative two, and negative two, negative three. What do you notice about those four points? The right goes down. No. It goes down on the y value, but the x value stays the same, right? So when it's a vertical line, which this one is, it's always going to be x equals some number for the equation of that line. So forget this. I'm going to just give you a graph. Let's say this is your graph. Of the year or the semester? Oh, you mean for the lesson? Yeah, this is the last thing. Um, so in this setup, okay, if this is my graph, this is a vertical line. Shh, pay attention. We're almost done. This is a vertical line. With a vertical line, then we have x equals or y equals as the equation. X equals or y equals? X equals. No, x equals. Okay, and then you think, what is my x value? For every point on this line, what is the x value going to be? Two, three. Three, right? Your x value is three. Three, zero, three, one, three, two, three, 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 four. So x equals three is the equation of that vertical line. Okay, now look at this one. Let's say we graph a horizontal line at negative one. Your equation is y equals negative one. Okay, so tell me this. This is your graph. What is the equation of this line? It is an x, not 2, negative 2, right? The equation of that line is x equals negative 2. What's the equation of, I need a new color here. Um, let's say this line. Horizontal line, so x equals or y equals. Uh, not negative two. This is our zero, right? So one, two, three. So y equals three. Okay, so just remember, horizontal lines are always y equals. Vertical lines are always x equals. And it's just a number that you're plugging in then. Okay?